Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this advanced Home Assistant video, we're going to be looking at connecting Home Assistant to an external database server. Now, fair warning, in this episode, we'll be delving into some fairly technical details. Once we've set it up, we're going to take a look at some of the data that gets piped into the external database, and then we're going to discuss why on earth we'd want to go to all of this trouble. So take a moment while I roll the intro to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. And let's get started. So here at home in my production instance of Home Assistant, I've set up Home Assistant to utilize an external database for storing logbook data, history data, and the new statistical data. For my production instance, I've got MariaDB running in a Docker container on my Unraid server. Now, if you're interested in Unraid, comment below and we might even take a deeper dive into Unraid for a future video. For the purposes of this video though, I'm going to be installing MariaDB using the add-on store within Home Assistant, but it is worth noting that it does defeat the purpose somewhat, and we'll get into the reasoning behind why we might want to do this a little bit later on. If you're running Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi like I am here, I would recommend setting up MariaDB on separate hardware. And in a future video, we'll actually discuss running Home Assistant in a Docker container on my Unraid server, but you could run it on whatever Docker host you happen to be running, whether that be something like a Synology NAS or other kind of storage system that includes Docker. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Now to install MariaDB, I'm going to, on my Home Assistant here, I'm going to head over to the supervisor and I'm going to go to the add-on store and I'm going to search for MariaDB. Uh, and you can see here it says a SQL database server. I'm going to click install on that. So that's going to pull the Docker container from the Docker hub. Okay, great. So now uh, that took a little while, um, but MariaDB is installed. Uh, what I want to do is head over to the configuration page here and I want to change this password from uh, we'll change this from null. I'm just going to make it home assistant. Uh, and we've got our databases there as well. We need at least the one uh, and our rights are there as well. And we've got our login. So uh, pretty basic. What I'm also going to do is add uh, the host port of 3306 here as well. And we'll save both of those configurations. We'll head back over to info and we're going to start this here. Okay, so that has started up and we've got our uh, CPU usage and RAM usage. Now I'm going to install another add-on here while I'm at it uh, and we're going to install PHP my admin. So I'm going to search for PHP and PHP my admin and I'm going to install this one. And this is going to come into play a little bit later when we're looking at the database. Uh, it's just a nice web interface for digging around inside databases. It is worth mentioning, however, that you don't actually need this in your instance. Uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, great. And with PHP my admin, I'm going to uh, turn the show in sidebar on. So it's there and we're going to start that add on. Okay, fantastic. So we have spun up the database server and now we need to configure Home Assistant to actually use it. Now to do that, we're going to open up our Visual Studio Code add-on and we're going to open our configuration.yaml, which is conveniently already here. And we need to add some fairly simple lines into our configuration.yaml. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make some room here and I'm going to type in the domain recorder and then colon. And then on the next line, we've got db underscore url now the address is mysql colon slash slash and we're going to type in home assistant colon home assistant 
at 192.168.1.146 slash home assistant. So this is the username, the password for that username, the IP address of the, the MySQL server, and the database of the MySQL server. So uh, that is quite important that you put the username, the password, and the database name in here if you are configuring yours with different usernames and passwords, which you definitely should. So now that we've added these lines to our configuration.yaml file, we're going to need to go to configuration and we'll need to go to server controls, check our configuration, and provided we've got configuration valid, we can restart Home Assistant, and that's going to obviously take a couple of moments. And provided we've not done anything silly, Home Assistant should come back up in a few moments, and we shouldn't notice that much difference in the interface at all. Okay, so now that Home Assistant has successfully started up, we're going to head over to phpMyAdmin, and this is the phpMyAdmin console. Uh, and we can see down the left-hand side the databases that we have available, uh, including the performance schema, etc. But the one that we're interested in, obviously, is Home Assistant, and we can expand that, uh, and we can see the different tables that are inside the Home Assistant database, uh, and then things like the columns and the indexes that are inside there. Now, if we were to click on this events table here, uh, we can see that we've got some events starting to be logged inside this table, uh, and it might take a little while for these to actually start showing up in here, but anytime there is an event triggered on your Home Assistant, you will see another row show up in this table. And if we look at recorder runs, that's probably a good example of uh, one that's not got a lot of data in there. Schema changes is the same deal. Uh, states, we'll start to see the states of different sensors in here. So for example, uh, we've got the sensor grid fossil fuel percentage is 51.07. The CO2 intensity is 422. Position of the sun is currently above the horizon and I am apparently not home. The statistics is actually something that um, while we don't have anything in here just yet, this is where the data for things like your energy dashboard will show up so you'll notice that there's no data for our energy dashboard right now and that's because it takes a little while for this information to feed into the sql database because the sql database is the source of this information and because we've changed from being the local database that was on the sd card on the pi uh, we're now moving over to the sql database that lives inside the maria db container that's running on the pi there's no data for this energy dashboard to display. Now I mentioned before that I've got my production Home Assistant instance pointing to a SQL database that is running on my Unraid server and you can see that MariaDB instance there. Uh, and it looks like there's an update for my MariaDB which I will run later. So what was the point though of all this work? Well there's actually a few reasons. Firstly, if you're running Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi like in my example here with the demo instance, you might have noticed that loading things like the history pages or logbook pages in the Home Assistant UI can be a little bit sluggish. And this is because the Pi's access to the storage on an SD card isn't particularly fast. Now you can solve this problem by installing Home Assistant onto an SSD or a different type of storage on the Raspberry Pi, or obviously running it on different hardware that has better storage or faster storage. But the other option here is to start running your SQL database on a SQL server uh, that is not necessarily attached to the Pi, and that way you might have faster data access to that data. Secondly, and the original reason that I set this up in the first place, is a few months after setting up Home Assistant for the very first time on my old Raspberry Pi 3, my local database grew really quite big and filled up all of the space on my SD card. It got to about six or seven gigabytes. And after that happened, I wasn't able to start Home Assistant anymore. Now, I've got significantly more disk space on my Unraid server for my MariaDB container. 
So by moving my Home Assistant database off to my Unraid server, there is a significantly decreased risk of that database growing too large and filling up the SD card on my Pi. This also means that I can retain a much larger history without worrying about the space that it's taking up. It is worth noting that the more accessories you're managing with Home Assistant, the quicker your database is going to grow. Thirdly, this configuration offers portability. Now this may have questionable benefit because it might not be important to you to retain historical data for years on end, but with this setup, you could theoretically move Home Assistant from one Raspberry Pi to a Docker container or any other server, but maintain that database connection back to this MySQL database and all of your historical data would be intact. Lastly, SQL servers like MariaDB and MySQL can be configured in a highly available manner. If you're not familiar with the concept of high availability, the basic idea here is that you would have more than one server configured to replicate the same data between them. And then in the event that one of those servers goes offline for any reason, whether it be power, network or hardware failure, another server in the cluster can then take over so that the database functionality afforded by the SQL server isn't lost. Now, to be fair, there's probably not a lot of use cases in a smart home where this would be required. But if you are using Home Assistant to coordinate smart accessories in an office space, high availability of the database would be advantageous to remove the likelihood of downtime. Now, something to be aware of if you are going to go down the path of using either MariaDB or MySQL on a server to store your logbook statistical data for Home Assistant is that it is absolutely vital that the drive the server is running on does not run out of space. If you do run out of drive space, the SQL server won't be able to start, Home Assistant will complain, you'll still be able to control your accessories, but things like the energy dashboard, history and logbooks will be broken and you'll tear your hair out trying to figure out why. Ask me how I know. So that is connecting Home Assistant to an external database. Now it's worth taking into account your configuration to determine if setting up Home Assistant in this way will provide a benefit in your environment. It's worth noting that this functionality in many cases is unnecessary, but if your setup would benefit or you just want to try it out, I do hope that this video has helped. That is all we have for this video and I hope it helped you in some way with your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with a home automation idea you'd like to see me cover in a future video. And don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, now is a great time to do so. And while you're at it, hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. Lastly, if you enjoy what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a Buy Me A Coffee link in the video description down below, and those contributions through Buy Me A Coffee are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.